Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters in the Lord. I bless you all once again in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank God for making us to see this present moment and giving us the breath of life, which is free. Hallelujah, somebody. You all know what I'm talking about. Where your mind will reflect to those in the hospital, those that are using oxygen to breathe in their daily activities. Amen, somebody. So for this, we say glory and adoration to God Almighty in the mighty name of Jesus. Quickly, I just want to refresh your mind to let you know whom you are in the Lord. I want to give a little word of exhortation, which I titled, Unskillful in the Knowledge of God. Many Christians today, many believers of God Almighty that are in Christ Jesus, they are believers, but yet they are still unskillful to the knowledge of God. Their knowledge is unskillful. Hallelujah to the things of God. But before we go for the word, let us pray. Heavenly Father, King of kings, Lord of lords, eternal rock of ages, the great I am that I am, once again I thank you for this moment, for the breath of life, for sending only your begotten son to come and die for me and uh, as many of your children that believe in you, that you have sent your son to die for them in the cross of crucifixion. In, and he said in that cross, it is finished. Father, we say may your name be glorified. We appreciate you. We are grateful. We say thank you, Jesus. Your word once again is about to come. Breath on your word. Use your word. As many that luckily turn out to this yeah, I mean, a video clip, I say may this word bring a transformation to them. Make it give them that insight of the knowledge of God. So that at the end, they will begin to eat meat. They will live drinking meat as a baby in the things of God. Every spirit of devourer that will make this one word not to bear fruit, not to stand and begin to bear fruit in the life of the children of God. Father, we render all important. Father, so that as you allow this word to make something great, meaningful in the life of your children, the end, all glory and adoration will be given to you, God Almighty, alone. For in Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Viewers all over the world, wherever you are watching me from, I bless you all once again in the mighty name of Jesus. As I earlier said, that I titled this one word from God, unskillful in the knowledge of God. Amen, somebody. But I want you to know, as a child of God, you will be given the opportunity to be liberated as far as you believe that Jesus is your Lord, person, and Savior. Because he already come to die for you. Hallelujah. You are no longer slave to death or to sin. Amen. Quickly, come with me to the book of Romans chapter 8. I want to read from verse 1. Just listen and be blessed in Jesus' name. The Bible says here, There is no condemnation now for those who live in union with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. There is no condemnation for those who live in Christ Jesus. I want to read more. For the law of the Spirit which brings us life in union with Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Did you hear that? I want to read more. What the law could not do, because human nature was weak, God did. He condemned sin in human nature by sending his own son. Did you hear that? Who came with a nature, like a man's sinful nature, to do away with sin. God did this so that the righteous demand of the law might be fully satisfied in us who live according to the Spirit. Hallelujah. And not according to human nature. Five. Those who live as their human nature tell them to have their mind controlled by what human nature wants. Two. Have their mind controlled by what the Spirit wants. Six. To be controlled by human nature result in death. Hallelujah. To be controlled by the Spirit result is life and eh, peace. Amen, somebody. Let me stop there first. What are we talking in one word? Here, Apostle Paul is letting us know that Jesus, the Son of the living God, have come to die for you and me. 
Remember, the, the title of the message is Unskillful to the Knowledge of God. Why do I come with such an assertion? Many believers today, they are still living a worldly, you know, like somebody in the world. That is how their lives still be. The way they are living is not different from those worldly people. Hallelujah, somebody. But I'm here to tell you here that Apostle Paul is using these words to draw our mind to whom we are in the Lord. For we not to live a carnal life. Because some of us today, for example, the way we talk, we continue to use man to condemn ourselves. We have forgotten that Jesus said, all these things he has paid the price for us. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. This is time for we to continue to say it is well with our soul. It is well with our spirit. It is well with our family. Everywhere we go, let us begin to use that one word, it is well. Because we are no more longer slave to sin. As many that are slave to sin, the Bible said they are living a life of death. Everything they are going to do is going to end up here on earth. But those that have given their life to Christ, those that Jesus came all the way from heaven to die for the sin he knew nothing about, have died for them. They have to live a life of the Spirit. When you are living a life of the Spirit, you will be in this world, but you are not categorized to those that are living a life of the worldly living. Your speech must be different. Your speech must be heavenly speech. I am here. Let this leg be painted. You use victory. I am here. Sickness is not for me. I command healing. The pain is not for me. Hallelujah, somebody. There are some people, they use math to condemn their marriage. And my marriage is not good. Continue to let people know, declare with your mouth, it is well. It is well. There is a song that says, it is well. It is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well, it is well with my soul with my soul it is well it is well with my soul hallelujah somebody here apostle paul was trying to analyze to us that for as many that believe that jesus has already paid up Price for them in that cross of crucifixion. Because every man born of a woman, we are living a, a nature of a sinful nature. We are living a life of sin. We are carrying a nature of sinful nature. So since Jesus has come to die for you, have paid that price, you are no longer living a life of sin. You are no longer have been a slave to sin. You are not exempted. You are not living a life of you know of the spiritual. You are living a life of a righteous man, a righteous woman. Hallelujah. We are being categorized to those that we are in a life of a heavenly race. We are no longer categorized to those worldly living. Hallelujah. So when something is happening, we need to speak the language of heavenly speech. We continue to ask ourselves, this thing we are going to say, is it the heaven? Is it a heavenly language? Hallelujah, somebody. It is where we continue to declare. Whether we are having a, an ugly situation, let us begin to use our mouth to declare victory on that condition that it is not for all, it is well with our soul. Hallelujah. He said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus have removed those load away from us, have taken us, taken that sin away from us. That is why he died, so that he used those dead to pay for sin. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost removing from that death. Death is no longer holding me in bondage. So we are not living a life of death. We are living a life of a living person. Hallelujah. The Bible said when we die as a righteous man, righteous woman, we are not going to die. Our soul will not die. We are all going to heaven. True by rapture, all those that are dead will be raised and they will be taken to heaven. Hallelujah, somebody. If your way is rightful with the living, the, the constitution of God in the scripture. Hallelujah, somebody. Here, Apostle Paul was using this word. 
to let us know the way we need to speak a good word, a word of life, not a life or a word of death. Hallelujah, somebody. But today, many Christians, many believers, because as I said initially last time on my topic, that we need to exercise our faith on the that Holy Spirit that is in us. When we have exercised our faith, we must have the knowledge of whom God is. So we need to be speaking a word of life to our spirit, to our condition, to our ugly situation. This is not a time we should live a life. Continue to sign hallelujah let us begin to say it is well with our soul as many because let me read there for you once again here apostle paul was using all these things to encourage us hallelujah somebody we need to live a life in the spirit not a life of worldly of kana hallelujah are you a child of god how did you proclaim something how did you uh, uh, the words that do come out from your mouth what kind of word do come out from your mouth? Is it a worldly word or a word from those that claim that they are being they are they are they are, they are speaking a word of this fruit of the of the spirit? Hallelujah! Somebody here, Apostle Paul was teaching us that to be controlled. I'm reading this to be controlled by the human nature result to in death. Hallelujah! That is why the word of God said in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1, that that key can never be given to you. Because the life we are living, we are living as immature. We are living a life of a worldly. We are not matured in the spirit. As you proclaim word of death to yourself, that you are sick, my home is not good, my children are not good, my families are not good, there is no job, I am tired, I am fed up. Are you a child of God? Hallelujah. Somebody, that is why here, if you look at it, the verse, it says, to so be controlled by the human nature result in death. Hallelujah, somebody. He said, and so a person becomes an enemy of God when he's controlled by his human nature. He's encouraging you to speak a word of life, a speech that is of life. Begin to speak a word that will give you life so that that key can be given to you. When you speak a word that you are using to condemn yourself, God will be angry with you. God will be furious with you. That key cannot be given to you according to Galatians chapter 5. That means you don't have the knowledge of whom God is. You are unskilled. You are not qualified. When we talk of those that are skilled, we are talking of those that have the qualification, that know who, what they are doing in such a, a, a time, of that time they are, they are measuring such a statement. Hallelujah. Let us quickly go to the book of First Corinthians chapter 13 to see the Christians of those days. They were quarreling among themselves. They were fighting among themselves. They were jealousy themselves. Apostle Paul let them know that he cannot speak a word of a spirit to them. Hallelujah. Let me read it for you to see. I'm here to encourage us. Whenever we speak, what kind of word that is coming out of our mind? Hallelujah. Are we speaking a word of life? A word of victory, Christ in you, the hope of glory. If Christ in you, really is in you, you believe that spirit of God is in you. Hallelujah. It will vitalize your mortal body. You are now living a, a, a life of life. That Christ-like life, Christ is living in you. You are not dead. You are no longer a slave to sin. Nothing will ever hold you in bondage. Hallelujah, somebody. Begin to claim that word of life in whatever you are saying to any ugly situation refuse to claim that negative that defeated statement rebuke it and begin to speak a word of life into your being into your ugly situation hallelujah into on a a, 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 a a condition that is not not you know a moment that is not a so much well the word of god here in book of Romans chapter 8 says we need to be speaking that word of life we need to believe that he has taken everything away from us we are no longer to those things we are speaking we are no longer slave to them when we speak as if we are still slave to those things that means the key can never be given to us we have already using our mouth to say we have that problem apostle paul is encouraging or letting us know here that we are living a life of a spirit we have that life of christ in us it is a hope of glory we are no longer defeated this this satan is under our feet hallelujah we need to live by the word of god not by the ugly situations we are seeing that is surrounding us 
Our God said the word of God needs to detect for us, need to control. We need to use our mouth to speak a word of life to those ugly situations. That is why when Jesus finished that 40 days and 40 nights fasting and praying, according to the book of Matthew chapter 4, the Bible said the devil took him to the desert to tempt him. But Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but he need to live by the word of God. Hallelujah. So we need not to be unskillful to the knowledge of God. We need to have the knowledge of whom God is and began to proclaim it and began to use it to speak salvation, righteousness, and victory. No matter the ugly situation that is confronting us. Hallelujah, somebody. I want to quickly read the book of First Corinthians as I was going through it. I said, let me use it to encourage as many that are done. That are because of material things, ugly moment, they are done, they are using their mouth to speak evil to themselves. That thing is a blockage, making that key of the empire not to be given to them. Let me read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I want to read from verses 1. He said, as a, I'm using good news version. As a, as a matter of fact, this is Apostle Paul talking to the be beloved brothers and sisters in the Corinthian church. My brothers, I could not talk to you as I talk to people who have the spirit. I had to talk to you as though you belong to this world. As children in the Christian faith, I, have, I had to feed you with meek, not solid food. Did you hear that? Because you were not ready for it. These are Christians. I don't know the condition that is confronting them, the ugly situation. Instead of them to say, I'm healed, I'm victorious. It is well with my soul. The sickness is not for me. Heaven is not having sickness. There is no quarrel there in heaven. We are here on earth. Jesus has died for us, making us not to be slave to all these things. We need to speak a speech of heavenly reign. We need not to speak where that will condemn us, that will still make us to be slave to those things that Jesus has already died for. Here in the book of Romans, Apostle Paul was letting us know through the words that were written there that such people that are still bringing down the name of the Lord, that are still they don't have the knowledge of whom God is, God will be annoyed with them. That key of that empire cannot be given to them according to the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. We need to speak a heavenly language. We need to tell God that we are his child to be boasting with the word of God. No matter the ugly situation, no matter what happened, we need to be saying it is well in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Here, I want to read to say how to feed you with meat, not a solid food, because you were not ready for it. And even now, you are not still ready for it. Three, because you still live as the people of this world live. When there is jealousy among you and you quarrel with one another, you see, does this prove that you belong to this world living by its standards? Our character, our way of behaving, showing that we are not even having the knowledge of whom God is, but yet we are claiming we are children of God. He, Apostle Paul, is encouraging us for we to do away with such character, for such a speech. We have to continue to be mindful of whatever we say. Remember the book of Matthew chapter, I think, uh, 11 verse 15 says, whatever comes out from our mouth, or if you look at il chapter 11 verse 15, if it is not there, then you go to chapter 15 verse 11. And he says, I quote, Jesus was saying this. He said, whatever comes out from our mouth defileth a man because it's coming from our spirit. When we say we are child of God, we need to speak a word that relates to that speech of heaven. Hallelujah. Anything we want to say, does this thing resemble the heavenly language? Our character we are exhibiting, we are possessing. Does it look like Heavenly character, that is why Apostle Paul saw the way the, 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 the Christians, they call themselves Christians. They are using teeth to eat themselves. They are biting, they are jealousy, they are quarreling, they are hating themselves. They have selfish ambitions. Hallelujah, somebody. Before a little tea, a little trial, they began to speak a word of condemnation. And Jesus has already 
pay the price for we as a child of God. That means we are skillful to the knowledge of God. We need to be skillful to the knowledge of God. We need to know whom God is. We need to know whom the person of Jesus is. The reason why he came, why he died for us. He said he has paid the price. But yet, Apostle Paul is still using the language of a meek to speak to these people. Are you one of them? Is your character look like this in this book of First Corinthians chapter 3? 1 to 3? Hallelujah, somebody. Or here in the book of Romans chapter 8, where we read from verses 1 to 6, where Apostle Paul is letting us know he saw many characters that he's supposed not to see. He has seen so many things he's supposed not to see in the body of Christ, in the children of God. Even the worldly people more and more better than them. Then he began to come out with this words to let them know we need not to live a life of worldliness. We need to live a life as, uh, as a child of God. Our character, our way of talking, our way of reacting to issues. Hallelujah. A condition that is not pleasant. How do we react? How do we speak? Do we speak word of faith or of somebody that is having that great faith in God, of knowing the knowledge of whom God is? Are we saying it is well with our soul? This is what a child of God is supposed to proclaim in any ugly situation, circumstances, no matter what you are passing through. Jesus has paid the price. It is said it is finished. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah, somebody. Let us be mindful of whatever we are doing as a child of God. Remember the Holy Spirit is, that is in us is watching us, is monitoring us. Whatever we are doing, they are all in the book of life, recorded there. Hallelujah, somebody. How are you living your life, Christ? child of God? We need to speak a speech of victory day in and day out. This is what this scripture is teaching us now. That we need to be encouraging ourselves with the word of God. We need to know who God is. By studying and having the knowledge of who he is. Be skin, having the skin of who he is. Not to be unskillful to the knowledge of God. Hallelujah, somebody. When we say this person is a skillful worker, that means that person is trained in that area of what he wants to use to work in that specific place. Hallelujah. Did you train yourself with the word of God? Did you have the knowledge of whom God is? Hallelujah. When you know it, no matter the ugly situation that is confronting you, no matter wherever you go, whatever is happening, no matter the temptation, our master Jesus let us know when he was tempted. He let the devil know man shall not live by bread alone. Hallelujah, somebody. But we should live by the word of God and what comprises in it. We should learn it and continue to eat it and digest it. And it will be part of us. So that people who see us, they will really know we are studying it. As we study, we abide by it. We began to act on it and people will see it. And really, we are the child of God. So that that key of that empire, in that book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, can be given to us. He, Apostle Paul, you know, was addressing them. See, they be quarreling, but biting every one another. Selfish ambition. When little thing happen, the words that is coming out of their mouth is not a word of life. It's not a heavenly words. Rather, it's a worldly life. They are using man to condemn themselves. They now use man to become a slave to sinful nature. Worldly things, the way they live, the way they react to issues, did not show at all that they even know the knowledge of whom God is. So, uh, Apostle Paul is using this scripture to encourage me, to encourage you. If you are that child that you call yourself a child of God, yet your way of living, this speech that is coming out of your mind, is like a worldly, more than arrogant, more than those that are living a worldly life. He said you should desist from them. Begin to study the word of God, to know whom God is, knowing the knowledge of God, knowing him and begin to apply them. Hallelujah, somebody. So that that key can be given to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe brothers and sisters in the Lord, with this little word of exhortation, began to study the word of God, to know who God is, knowing the knowledge of whom God is. Don't be unskillful to the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. The title I wrote here, unskillful in the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Are you a child of God? Are you studying the word of God? Do you have the knowledge of whom God is? Are you applying it? If you know whom the knowledge, you have the knowledge of whom God is. The scripture said we need in this Romans chapter 6 to be applied there so that those who see us, 
they will really believe of a truth. We are really true child of God. But here in this book of First Corinthians chapter 3, where you go from down from verse 1 to 3, Apostle Paul was using this to reference to them. See what the character they are exhibiting does not look like they have even know whom God is. Because if you know who God is, you call yourself a child of God. You need to drop those character of the worldly character. We can't just be drinking meek, meek, meek. When we are babies, no one know when he was a baby. Hallelujah, somebody. Our parents were taking care of or giving us meek. But these words have been given to us. For we to train ourselves to become skin and knowing the knowledge of whom God is so that we can become to be applying them. Churches of today just scatter. We are not coming together as one. There is no love. We count on an error. Most of all, we don't have a fact. We count on an insinuations. It's supposed not to be so, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let us love one another. Let us say it is well with our soul when we are we are, we, are, we are coming across every ugly situation. Is it sickness? Is it barrenness? Are you in problem, financial problem? Are you looking for a job? No matter what is happening. The Bible says here in the book of Romans chapter 6 that we need to speak that heavenly realm language. Hallelujah. Have we know whom God is? Amen, somebody. Praise the Lord. I'm here to use this to encourage you. Go for the word of God. Let your character not be different, be different from that character of Christ. Amen. When we say we are a child of God, we should examine ourselves, our character. Does it look like that of Jesus in the character Jesus performed here in the scripture? When we see it is different, let us desist from them. Let us come to Christ and begin to stand on that lane of God and begin to apply His way of living in our daily activities. Amen, somebody. No matter the storm, no matter the rain, no matter the sun, no matter the ugly situation, no matter the unconditional uh, 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 circumstances, let us begin to use. It is well with me. Glory be to God. I am a winner. I am a champion of all champions. I am an overcomer. Hallelujah, somebody. Begin to use that language of heavenly language. Begin to use it in your daily activities. That is why we are called child of God. That is why we are exempted. He said in that cross, it is finished. Whatever you are passing through, we have known he has come to die for us. That is why he came as a human. To show those examples for us. Hallelujah, somebody. So that we can emulate them. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. I would like to leave you here, but before I go, I want to play a little melody that says, it is swear with my soul. Just listen and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, if I made a mistake, I'm learning. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm just learning it. <laughs> Amen. somebody. I have to pause this thing and learn it a little bit. I will come to you later. Amen. <laughs> 